the global circulation system. The Earth is unevenly heated by the sun. The equator receives a more concentrated amount of the sun's rays and so is hotter than the poles that receive a less concentrated amount of the sun's rays. The extra heat that goes to the equator is redistributed around the world by the ocean currents and also by wind through air masses moving this heat away from the equator. In this presentation we're going to be concentrating on the atmospheric circulation system, just wind, how air is moved around the planet. This is the most important slide really um, to understand um, how air is moved around the planet. If air is heated up, this air rises. As the air gets cooler within the atmosphere, um, water vapour condenses and we get clouds and rain forming. We call this low pressure because air is rising, it's not pushing down on the Earth's surface. Meanwhile, if air sinks, clouds are not formed. There isn't condensation taking place, therefore we get clear and calm weather. And this occurs where cold air is sinking. We call this high pressure because as the air sinks, it is pushing down on the ground. It is putting high pressure on the ground. So things to remember from this slide, rising air gives us clouds and rain and falling air gives us nice conditions and clear skies. So let's move on and let's have a look at what this global pattern of air circulation is. Now we've said the sun's rays are concentrated where the equator is, so it is warm there. Therefore, air rises above the equator. When it rises up high within the atmosphere, it will spread out. It moves out to each side because it can't go out into space. So as it gets higher, it will move out from where it's rising from. Now also, as the air rises in the atmosphere, it gets colder. For every 100 meters in height you go up, it gets one degree centigrade colder. And cold air doesn't rise, cold air sinks. So this air that has moved out away from the equator, it sinks back down. And the places where it sinks back down are about 30 degrees north of the equator and 30 degrees south of the equator. As the air sinks down, it will move away from these areas, forming two cells, like so, that we call the Hadley cells. Now, at 90 degrees north, where the North Pole is, and at 90 degrees south, where the South Pole is, it is very cold. Therefore, in these areas, air sinks. The air sinks down towards the ground, and when it meets the ground, it will spread out away from the ground. Yes, it will go this direction as well, and this direction as well, but for the sake of this diagram, I'm just showing you where the air is going on the right on the east side of this map that you can see. As the air moves away from 90 degrees towards the 60 degrees line, um, it will be getting warmer as it moves away from the North Pole here. And therefore, as it gets warmer, um, it will rise. And here, as the air moves from 90 degrees south up to 60 degrees south here, it will be getting warmer as it moves away from Antarctica and then it will become less dense and it will rise again. These cells also rotate their air and these ones are called the polar cells. Now, this updraft, this moving up of air here, will drag up air next to it. So there we go, and this air beside it is being dragged up. And this downwards movement of air in the Hadley cell at 30 degrees south, and this downwards movement of air here at 30 degrees north, that will drag air down with it. And then we can complete these two cells, and these are called the feral cells. Now what we can see here is the global pattern of air circulation. This is the way that air moves around the planet. But if we look, we've got definite areas where the air is rising 
it's rising here at 0 degrees, it's rising here at 60 degrees. And as we know, rising air will lead to clouds forming and rainfall. So this explains why Britain is quite a wet country, because it's found at 60 degrees north, where you get this low pressure. This explains why at the equator it is so wet, because you have low pressure, and likewise at 60 degrees south. We also have areas where air is sinking. So here at 30 degrees south, here at 30 degrees north. And along these lines, you get a line of deserts, such as the Sahara Desert, such as the Atacama Desert, um, such as the Gobi Desert in China here. And these deserts form because this sinking air, which is high pressure, means that clouds don't form. Um, Antarctica, some people describe as the largest, des largest desert on the planet, and it's because here, where Antarctica is, you have sinking air, which is high pressure. Likewise, in the Arctic, you've got sinking air, which is high pressure. Now, each of these areas where you get rising air or sinking air um, is known as a different climate zone. So here at 0 degrees, it's the tropical climate zone. At 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, where the deserts are, we call them the subtropical climate zones. Um, at 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south, these are the temperate climate zones, like Britain. Um, we have a lot of rain. We have four seasons during the year. And then finally, um, to the very north, to the very south, we have the polar climate zones. Now, here is a map of the world showing you um, the distribution of these four climate zones. And again, around the middle of the Earth at 0 degrees, you can see tropical. And then this is where the deserts are. The red areas are subtropical at approximately 30 degrees north and south. Here are the temperate zones, the brown areas at approximately 60 degrees north and south. And then finally, we've got the polar areas um, to the very north and south of the Earth. This is a summary slide which tells you more information about the world climate zones.